Hey you guys, it's um, Monday and I am heading over to my exercise class right now. But um, today is the day that we go in and sign papers for the close on the house. We are actually supposed to close on the house on Wednesday. Um, that may or may not happen. It probably will happen on that day, but sometimes there are delays, but I can't imagine why there would be a delay. Usually, usually the de delay happens with the f financing and our financing has been ready to go for actually about two months. <laughs> so we are, we have waited this long to close on the house because when we moved back to Flagstaff last year, as you guys may remember, um, the housing market was ridiculous. We decided to rent for a year. And so we took the money from the sale of our house and we put it in a 13 month CD and we couldn't access it until July 15th. And that's today. I wanted to show you dinner tonight. It's really easy, kind of a throw together kind of a thing. These are flat flatbreads with, um, they're kind of flatbread pizzas with some heirloom tomatoes. I got these, let me just show you how simple. These flatbreads, that's actually non-bread that I found at uh, Safeway. And this was a pack of four. I'm fixing up two tonight. And then what you do is, let me, Okay, I'm gonna turn on the light there. Um, then what you do is you spread some pesto on top. So this is just a jar of pesto and you put, you know, you just spread it on top of each one. And then you put some cherry tomato halves on it and then some mozzarella cheese and I, fresh mozzarella. And I bought the kind that's already pre-sliced so that made it really simple. And I tucked the tomatoes under the cheese in some places, just so that, you know, I mean, it, it, there's not enough cheese on there to put tomatoes under all of it, but I wanted to have it bubbly and over some of the tomatoes. So you do that, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven on 450. So I just put it in the oven until the mozzarella is melted and the tomatoes are softened. So probably somewhere around 10 minutes, maybe a little less, I'll watch. And then afterwards, what I'm gonna do is sprinkle on some basil leaves and some uh, walnuts that have kind of just a rough chop. And then um, I was thinking of putting some, some like arugula or something on top, but I just asked John and he doesn't really, he's not, he's not really into that. So, so I'm gonna leave that off. But this is just, um, just super easy, something where you just kinda assemble dinner instead of having to spend a lot of time putting this together it took me about five minutes and it's ready to go into the oven right now okay so here they are out of the oven i sprinkled some walnuts on top i had sprinkled dried basil on there because i um i just remembered when we were at the grocery store they didn't have fresh basil and i'm not growing any currently so i just sprinkled some dried basil on there and i also put some of that flake salt that i told you about in one of my most recent vlog videos it's called malden salt and that's it so if you were going to put arugula on it you mix a little balsamic vinegar and oil and toss that with the arugula and then put it on top but we're just having it like this Hey you guys, it is Tuesday and I uh, just, I'm just uh, taking Monica back from, we were over at the vet, she has to get Bordetella, I, I don't know whether to call it a vaccine, it's not a shot. Um, it's, sometimes they give a, sh a shot I think for Bordetella, some, or maybe they don't. They, sometimes they squirt it in their mouth, sometimes they have a spray that they put up their nose, but it's to prevent them from getting kennel cough. So it's a good idea to, well most, most boarding facilities require that dogs have a Bordetella vaccine if they're going to stay there so that they don't pass kennel cough on to each other and hold on my, uh, there my rearview mirror was not adjusted right um 
anyway, uh, she was due for that and because she goes to day camp on a regular basis. She has to have it done every six months and she's going to go to day camp tomorrow. So I'll be able to show them proof of that tomorrow. But um, anyway, I'm driving back to my house, which we signed for yesterday. Did I tell you that? John and I went over there and we signed all the papers for that. And the house, um, it officially closes tomorrow. So starting tomorrow, the house will officially be ours. Hey guys, I am just now leaving um, my hair appointment. And I'm so excited about my hair. I don't know that you can see right now, but my hair has been awful lately. Ever since I lost weight, my thyroid has been off and um, my endocrinologist keeps having me go and get blood work done like every two months. And, um, and then it's, you know, it's getting better, but it's still off. It's getting better, but it's still off. And my hair has seemed really dry and it's gotten really thin and scraggly and falls out and breaks really easily. And so I was, I had just a whole bunch of breakage in here from where I put the clips in my hair when I sectioned it off to dry it. And, um, anyway it was i even chopped some of it off myself a few weeks ago because it was just looking so scraggly on the ends and um my fingernails have been bad for a long time too and they just start i just started to be able to get some length on them so i think this last change to my thyroid medication has helped well because clearly my fingernails are starting to grow and um and not shred and break and everything. So I think this last increase to my thyroid medication has, has changed. And Okay, picked up my CSA bag today, and um, so I got some leeks, and I have a, a soup recipe that I make with leeks that I really like, so I may use that for that. Some green beans, I got collards. I have a soup that I make with collard greens. I mean, it's kind of warm for having a soup right now, but but it is a pretty good and healthy soup. Normally I would have traded out the bell peppers for something else, but they had tat soy there and I really don't like tat soy. So I traded out the tat soy instead and kept the bell peppers. I got twice the number of tomatoes, which is nice and two ears of corn. Oh, and also we got to pick from either chives, uh, parsley, Italian parsley or dill. And I make this pasta recipe that I absolutely love that has um, dill in it. And so I think I might be making that for dinner, maybe tonight. It's got feta cheese and tomatoes and stuff. It's really good. So I'll have to show you that. Hi guys, I'm gonna show you that pasta recipe. I normally make it with penne pasta, but I'm gonna use a more like a angel hair spaghetti kind of a thing. Um, right now I'm, I'm cooking the pasta, but it is quite possibly one of the easiest recipes you'll ever make. And it's great to make in the summer because it uses all, you know, fresh vegetables and stuff like that. So let me just show you what I do here for this. Okay, so in a bowl, and I will link this recipe. I have it on my blog and I'll link um, over to my blog so you can see the recipe for this. I didn't even measure this out. The, the blog post has exact measurements, but what you do is just in a bowl, you put some feta cheese, some cherry tomatoes sliced in half, some fresh dill snipped up, and um, some olive oil. There's It also calls for green onions. I don't have any green onions, so I used some of the leeks that I got in today's CSA, and then I put in a little bit of salt and pepper. So then what I'll do after the pasta is finished cooking, I'll drain it, but while it's still hot and steaming, I will just dump the pasta in this and mix it up. The pasta will warm the tomatoes and it will melt the feta cheese and that is it. And it's so good. I'll show you when it's all That's done. That's it. It's all nice and hot and the feta is starting to melt and um, it's just a super yummy meal. So, <clears throat> As you can see, Monica and I are out for a walk. Um, we've been doing uh, this little routine that anytime John does his bar three exercises, did I tell you that he's been doing bar three? Um, on video, because when you get a, a studio membership, it comes with um, the online workout library. 
And so he decided to try it and he can actually do it. You know, he's, he has a fake ankle joint and so he has a hard time walking for any distance. And so uh, he, but this doesn't, um, this doesn't affect his ankle. And, and of course they're always encouraging modifi modifications. So if there was anything that was gonna give him a problem, he could always modify. But he's been, he's been doing these exercises now or these workouts for, I don't know, maybe a little over a week. Maybe he's done about six of them. Um, and he really likes it. So rather than sit in the living room and watch him do his exercises, because I don't need to, I don't need to do more than one <laughs> in a day, but rather than sit and watch him, um, I just take Monica and we go for a little spin around the block. Hi, you guys. Um, it's Tuesday and I'm heading over to a meeting I have for the NAU Retiree Association and um, I'll get a better look at how the mountain looks as I get closer. Um, I called my friend Melissa this morning and she was not answering. I don't know if she's in the shower or I got a little nervous. I texted her right when I woke up and um, I didn't hear back. So I don't know if she's sort of overwhelmed with everybody wanting to know how she's doing or if, um, you know, I was concerned. I thought, oh no, what if they got evacuated overnight? And um, they didn't. I checked the flag scanner website from Facebook and um, they, they didn't say anything about further evacuations. The only one they have done was to do a back burn to protect some neighborhoods not because it was reactive to the you know the fire coming closer uh, there's still zero percent containment on the fire and they're still estimating 1800 acres uh which is a lot but they did not they didn't it sounded like it didn't grow much overnight which is hard to believe because Melissa said it was just creeping toward her house last night. And in case you're wondering, the reason they did not, they have not been, well, I think the reason that they haven't evacuated Melissa's neighborhood is that it's mostly grass and there are pine trees, but they're in clusters and they're, none of them are around her house. I think most of the houses in that area, the trees are back a little bit toward the mountain so um, even if those trees went up in flames they're not gonna there's just not so many of them that they're gonna catch a house on fire um, so that's probably why even with the fire being about a half mile from her house that's probably why it was still they were still not having them leave but they had Forest Service personnel stationed at her neighborhood and all of the neighborhoods that are on pre-evacuation. Oh, I can see the mountain now. I can't see fire, but boy, oh boy, is it all smoky. Wow. Wow. Huh. Uh, anyway, so th the Forest Service has been regularly talking to the residents and just giving them updates about things and, um, they've been really, really good with working with them. The other thing they've been doing is they've been moving people off of their street because people are going over there to take pictures and they're parking, they're driving in to her street and like lining the streets to take pictures. And when they were trying to get their goats out yesterday, they were having a hard time getting out of their driveway and out onto the street so they could take their goats over to their friend's house. And so the Forest Service is trying to keep people from coming onto these streets and blocking the way for people who may actually need to get out. Uh, yeah, so that's, I, I don't really have too much more to update on. Apparently they're having some big town meeting tonight and they're gonna give more information. They're referring to this firefight as something that they will be doing for the next couple of weeks, which is sad to say. And then they're also talking about the possibility of flooding because with all of this, all of the vegetation that will have been burned from this fire, if we do get monsoon rains and we're supposed to start getting them today um, at around 11, although it's 
10 15 right now and it there's clouds in the sky but it doesn't look like monsoon um, so th so we're supposed to get monsoon rains it looks like we're supposed to get them starting today through Friday and that would be great it's good and it's bad because it's good obviously because it puts moisture into the air and will possibly rain on the fire although fires tend to create their own weather systems and sort of push clouds away the heat of it sort of pushes it away the other thing is that um, with monsoon storms comes lightning and yesterday we were hearing thunder and apparently there were a few lightning spark sparked fires in that same area so they have to kind of stop what they're doing in one place to go put out this other fire so that it doesn't you know start something really big and then join with the other fire so there's that and the other thing that happens with monsoon rains is wind and so none of those things are desirable but if it means that we can get rain and i hope because sometimes our monsoon rains are just like little drizzly things and then other times it's just a deluge of water and so if it could be something like that where it's just a really good rain um, that would be lovely except then we don't know what will happen in terms of flooding it's just you know it's just one thing one thing after another and it's sad it's sad for I'm looking over there at the mountain right now it's just sad for our landscape and it's sad for people nobody's lost a structure at this point which is great but there's a lot of people who are you know worried and wouldn't you be you know and I think I might have mentioned this last night but um, Melissa said it's one thing to say it's just stuff none of it matters but then she said when you're actually getting down to pulling photo albums out and you know she said she had these little these little ceramic dishes that her aunt made for her when she was six and she was like you know I might have said that those weren't important but right now they feel pretty important to me and so you know she's not talking about every single thing she owns but she's mostly talking about family heirlooms and stuff like that and things that she just would like to have and and keep in her family and pass down to her children so yeah and I imagine there are hundreds and hundreds of people in this town today who are feeling that very same way so um, yeah I'll update you as I hear stuff so I just want to show you this um, my friend Melissa knows this photographer and he gave permission for her to post these and um, this is actually taken very close to her house I think her house is like right over here um, literally like right over here and that is how close the fire is. The good news is that all of this up in here, most of it is grass and not very densely placed trees. Um, but it just creep, keeps creeping closer. They haven't evacuated them yet and I think it's just because it's only burning grass and it's not like taking trees up in these big infernos. Um, it's not um, it's not something they've been worried about it's hard for me to believe they're not worried about that, but um, yeah, that's what it looked like last night out at her house. Okay, guys, let me show you my patio. That's rain. It's just sprinkling right now, but there was just a big, um, a big crash of thunder. I mean, it's sort of a double-edged sword because we need the rain, but... A storm brings lightning, which can spark more fires, and it can also bring wind. However, it is absolutely still right now. I just saw an ash fall down. Um, oh my gosh, I hope it rains. I hope the sky just opens up, and especially, of course, over... I mean, it would be great for my flower gardens to be watered, but it would be even better if it rained really hard over the, over the mountain to put out this fire. Yay! All the pollen. Look. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is some good rain. Just keep coming. Yay. Oh, you 
guys, look at this photo Melissa took this morning. And she took it, she had to have taken it with a wide angle lens because the mountain is closer to her house than, than that looks there. But the fire had come just behind this tree line. It was probably about a half mile from her house and had burned all the way down the mountain. And um, anyway, it rained at her house overnight and she said everything is wet and her, her words to me were, it's a whole new morning over here. And look at that rainbow. You can still, of course, see the smoke because the fire is still burning, but um, boy, did that, did that, uh, did that rain make a difference? Here's another picture at Melissa's house to show you. Um, that other one, I think she must have used a wide angle lens because the mountain looked so much farther away. And this one gives you um, a better idea of how close the mountain is. And the, like I said, the fire was right behind that tree line. And the tree line um, is not heavy right up to that point. There was like grass going down and so it was all the way down, it was all the way down the mountain the other, uh, yesterday, it was all the way down the mountain. And so, and so, boy, it stopped just in time. Okay, you guys, I'm on my way to Doggy pl Playland with Monica, but I wanted to give you this um, perspective. This is the peaks. That was not on fire. This is Mount Eldon, which looks really small right now. It's at an elevation of 9,000 feet. But anyway, that is what was on fire. And it, it spans from one side of town to the other. And so uh, 10 years ago when there was the big fire, the whole backside of this mountain was on fire. But this is the one, and as you can see this morning, there's not a lot of smoke in the sky. And um, it's hard to tell the difference between the clouds and the smoke. Hey guys, um, it's Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to pick up Monica from day camp. And today has been just such a great day in terms of what's going on with the fire. Um, we had, like I said, you know, we woke up to rain this morning. And, um, Donna sent me a link she found. I'm going to link it in the space below for you. If you click on it, it actually gives a simulation of the fire, an overhead view of the fire. So it doesn't actually show the fire it shows um it shows just like a colored thing overlay of on the mountains and so and it just kind of goes over the mountain so as you um when you click on it to see it because because you know what i've been showing you is not even half of of the fire and most of it's back behind so as if you do go and click on that, when you get to the very end where it's like it comes, it goes over the front of the mountain and then there's this big expanse that it shows where the fire was. And then it goes down to the end and it goes over a mountain. It goes over and then it stops. Well, that is where Melissa lives. So just, so right as it goes over that last mountain, that was that mountain that I showed you that she was filming when she went, oh shoot. Um, and it came down and her house was at the base. So when you, when you see that, that aerial view and it goes down the mountain and all of a sudden there's a little strip of trees, she's just on the opposite side of those trees. And so you can see just how close it came to her house. And um, I think it's still burning over there, but you know, it got really doused last night. And so, and I'm sure because most of it on that side was grass and bushes and stuff like that, I'm sure most of it was put out. But she was feeling, she was feeling way, way, way better this morning about everything. So um, we all were. So this has sort of occupied everybody's everybody's minds, you know, over the last couple of days. And in fact, I was at bar three this morning and there's this lady who is kind of friends with my mom, um, sort of friend, like an art friend of my mom's. And she is one of the ones who has evacuated. She was telling us about that. She has five horses, I think. And so she had to get her horses out and, um, 
built and they just announced this afternoon that they were letting those people go home and so they started changing everybody's status on the ready set go system and so people who were on go are now on set and people who were on set are on ready and so they were changing so i just kept getting these emergency alerts you know how the amber alert that comes through on your phone that's just this loud loud alarm um yeah i got like six of those in a period of 10 minutes <laughs> which is a little obnoxious but but at least we got an idea of what was going on so here's an interesting thing um i was watching this tanker yesterday drop a big bunch of that orange slurry and um, did I tell you this, that the slurry they drop is actually uh, filled with fertilizer. And so not only does it drop and douse fire, but it also coats the plants, the ones that are, you know, it coats the plants and the ones that are still living, it provides a thermal barrier so that if more fire does come through, it keeps them from getting burned and it keeps them from being compromised if they don't burn because you know the, it gets hot so it keeps them cooler and then it's got fertilizer in it that then helps the the trees and plants that are still living it helps them to rejuvenate faster which I thought was kind of cool but the thing I was going to tell you is this plane that came over was just enormous and the Flagstaff Airport cannot handle enormous planes the runway isn't long enough and so the what they do is they they refill these planes in Winslow, which is about a 50 minute drive from here. And so it's probably a 20 minute, 20 minutes by the airplane. And the reason why, now Winslow is a tiny little town. It probably, Flagstaff has what, 70, 70,000 people and Winslow probably has maybe 10 maybe 10,000 people. So why does it have this big long runway that can handle one of these planes? It doesn't have um, an, an official, you know, big airport that you can fly into. It, it probably has like local stuff, you know, that use, that use that. But the reason it has this big airstrip is because years and years ago, it was thought that Winslow was going to be the bigger city in Northern Arizona, which didn't happen. Um, but Howard Hughes wanted to be able to fly into Northern Arizona, so he built, he paid for this really long runway to be built in Winslow. And so now we have this runway that can be used for helping to fight forest fires, which is kind of cool. And so, and, and uh, anyway, so Winslow, you've, I'm sure you've heard this from, is it the Eagles song? Standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, such a fun sight to see. Um, anyway, um, and there is a there is a corner that's sort of like that spot where every bit when people go to Winslow, that they they go and they get a picture of them standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Hey guys, it's Friday, and we um, went downtown to eat, and then uh, Melissa just sent me a text and said that they're having a last minute get together. They're calling it um, the uh, Our House Didn't Catch On Fire Friday. So we're heading over to their house. I'm not sure if there's anything that you can see from there as far as what burned or didn't burn, but um, I might be able to film something for you. Okay, so the fire on this side is, is mostly out, but what you can see is, see where um, the trees are, it's focusing on my finger, but see how they're thicker over here and then it gets real sparse straight ahead? That's where it burned and was coming over the mountain, and then it gets thicker over on that side. But they were, they were really lucky. It's definitely smoky and it's burning on the other side of the ridge. So beautiful. So glad that the fire is not burning on this side anymore. It is burning on the other side, though. Give you a little view of Melissa's patio area. Not fun. So beautiful. So it's all looking. It's 
still looking pretty good. Over in this direction right here, though, I don't know if you can see that out there, but that's cloud. I mean, not clouds, that's smoke. More thunderstorm activity expected this afternoon. Well, we're ready and waiting for some of those storms to arrive. Well, you guys, it rained pretty much all night. I mean, it's not really raining right now, but everything's wet. Chad, stop. And um, it rained yesterday for most most of the day. It was sprinkling. Well, um, it started in the uh, oh, well, early afternoon, I guess, when it started raining. And um, I... We're going to have to go on online and check, but I wouldn't be surprised if the fire is completely out. That would be a really, really good thing if the fire was completely out.